so today I want to talk about some of those assets that you may have that are inaccessible, but you want to roll, in, roll those into your uh, compliance and vulnerability programs. Uh, do, do you guys run into any uh, assets that people don't want you to touch or scan for security purposes? No? Everything's accessible? Well, in that case, uh, we got good news. We have a bunch of uh, different sensors today, right? We have the network scanner uh, sensor. We have Klaus, Qualys Cloud Agent. We have a passive uh, network sensor, as well as for containers, we have a container sensor. So we have all this uh, sensors to gather all this telemetry and security and compliance data, but in some cases, we encounter some of our customers, uh, you know, have areas where uh, they have systems that are really housing some critical business applications that they don't want to uh, have you scan or have an agent on, you know, uh, for different business reasons, right? So the idea here is to come up with some uh, way to assess those uh, assets and roll them up into your compliance and vulnerability programs, right? So without being able to uh, get coverage for those assets, you know, we don't really have a complete inventory. So with all the sensors that I talk about, we gather a lot of data. You may have a coverage for 95% of your environment, but you may have some areas that are, you know, we'll talk about that are uh, sensitive, uh, or you just don't have access, or you can't obtain access, but you do still need to account for them from inventory perspective. If you don't have inventory, you can't really properly secure those assets. And uh, if you can't secure them, then you don't know uh, what your exposure uh, would be from vulnerability and compliance perspective, you know. These uh, assets could be, in some cases, really old, legacy, or in some cases, they may be like vendor specific, right? Or there, it's uh, part of a business unit that's really, uh, you know, r really in an area where, you know, it's uh, just in inaccessible. And uh, what that results in, in is uh, in, in ineffective uh, risk evaluation, right? You can't get a complete risk posture of your organization. And uh, there's also an impact on the compliance audit. So as your organization goes through the audit programs, right? Uh, you know, they want to be able to audit those uh, assets as well. So having the ability to do this ahead of time when the auditor gets there saves you time and also uh, cost. So some of the blind spots that uh, we encounter are for the sensitive systems, right? Uh, you know, uh, you know the uh, systems are sensitive for network remote scans, for example, right? Uh, you can also not put some kind of an agent on those, right? And then in some cases, they're regulated, highly regulated devices, uh, you know, just because, uh, you know, there's a perception that uh, scanning this device may impact, uh, you know, the asset in any way. Uh, you may not be able to get access to do, uh, you know, scan those systems. Then obviously we talked about legacy systems. So throughout my talks, I've been asking uh, customers, how many of you guys would admit to having something like Windows 2003 in your environment, right? You know, those, those systems are, you know, uh, over a decade old, 15 years old in this case, but they still reside in your organization. You still need to account for those, right? Uh, from a holistic, uh, complete inventory perspective, complete compliance perspective, and vulnerability perspective, right? In some cases, like we saw with WannaCry, you know, Microsoft had to go back and break their, uh, you know, norm and release, uh, you know, updates or patches for these really old systems like XP and even Windows 2000, right? And in some cases, uh, you have appliances that are residing in your data centers. Uh, but, you know, they're black boxes. Uh, the vendor doesn't really give you access to them or there is no uh, protocol or ports are not exposed. You don't want to be exposing those because of security reasons. But we still want to assess those to make sure they're properly and securely configured. And then, of course, this uh, is the white elephant in the room. We, every place has some air gap networks. You know, it's like disconnected from the internet. But we still want to be able to assess those using our out of band uh, you know, security assessment, we can do that. So today, uh, there are some various uh, options that your organization may be doing, like uh, running ad hoc scripts, uh, you know, to uh, gather some of this uh, compliance or telemetry data. You know, uh, they may be uh, having uh, some kind of a script, some engineer wrote uh, that passes around, and in some cases, you're also gathering some screenshot to meet the audit requirements, right? But it's not a sort of a scalable solutions, it's a one-off. You have majority of your, uh, you know, 
security and compliance data within the Qualys framework already, but this uh, just happened to remain on the side. So the idea for us is to close that gap and roll everything into one single pane of glass. So with the uh, out-of-bind uh, configuration assessment, uh, the idea is we're going to expose this capability for you to upload this conf out-of-band config data telemetry data into the Qualys Cloud Platform where all of your security and compliance data already resides. So uh, the, uh, this is just a functional overview of how the workflow would look like, right? So for any systems, uh, to get the inventory, we have to be able to provision those assets. So you know, you're walking through the workflow, identifying what type of that asset is, and then uh, you know, uh, uploading that data to Qualys. Then uh, from an assessment from compliance perspective, you, uh, uh, you know, set outside uh, the controls, right? You may already have a security policy that lists out all the controls for this particular technology, right? So based on those, what that translates to is that you, uh, we give you the commands to gather that data. And then uh, based on those commands, you will uh, give those to the admins, people that have access to those devices to gather that particular data, right? And then once you have that data, you upload it to the Qualys Cloud Platform, either via the user interface or to the API calls, which I'll discuss. And once that data is coming in, uh, the Qualys apps goes, uh, go to work. We have about 18 different applications today that cover anything from inventory, IT security, to web application security, you know, indication of compromise, file integrity. You know, we have 18 different applications. Most people only know us uh, as a vulnerability provider, right? So these applications will automatically start processing this data for compliance and vulnerabilities. And then you can, uh, you know, view this data in the normal report. So if you're generating a vulnerability report today, it will have data for these out of hard to reach inaccessible assets as well. If you're looking at your compliance reports, they will have data uh, so when uh, you have uh, data for all of your assets, right, included. So really quickly, I'm going to walk through this uh, workflow. It's a preview of uh, how this would look like from the UI perspective. So uh, as you can see uh, uh, from the Qualys perspective, we have uh, it's a single uh, login screen which uh, you can see 18 different applications. This particular module is going to be uh, embedded in the compliance side of the house. And uh, when you look at the screen, you know you'd be able to uh, bring in your assets, right? You're adding the assets. Uh, to add an asset, you identify which technology this belongs to, right? In this case, we will uh, do like this FireEye appliance and you provide the OS family that, uh, that is part of. And then once you hit next, at this point you can build a list of all those assets, either via CSV file or you can kind of manually uh, you know, provide the metadata for those assets, right? So the metadata is like, could be the IP address, host names, NetBIOS name, MAC address. And then uh, here you can specify if you want to enable this uh, assessment for vulnerability as well as compliance or just one of those modules. And once the asset information is here, uh, we know we can move on to the point to uh, bring in uh, the data f from the out-of-band assessments that you've done, like you've run those commands uh, externally. So here, in this, uh, for this FireEye appliance, what we're doing is we just need, uh, uh, in order to assess it, just the dump of the running config, right? So you can obtain that data from CMDB or uh, you know, the admin can run this command on the appliance itself and uh, paste in this uh, text output or you can attach it as a file. And uh, you can additionally, you'd be able to go look at the view details in the la later on and you know, uh, identify you know, all this uh, metadata about the asset as well as any of the commands that have been run against it. This data is also going to feed into our asset inventory and asset view where it's going to be dynamically be searchable. So 
that is what the UI portion would look like. I want to switch back to my PowerPoint and kind of talk about, uh, you know, talk about uh, uh, the API calls that we're going to uh, be uh, releasing with this. So just to quickly to get back, uh, here is sort of a, uh, the report that you're looking at. Uh, and this report is uh, basically a, ma a mandate-based report, right, uh, from policy compliance. As you look down to the control right here, uh, looking at, uh, you know, status of uh, remote syslog rules, and you can see that uh, I have data from a PC technology as well as the OCA technology for this control. So this is what I was talking about. Once data is already being brought into Qualys, it seamlessly will be available to you in the reports and dashboards that are already there and you're used to seeing those, right? So uh, you saw the UI portion of it. Uh, I wanted to talk about the API. So anything that you can do in Qualys with, uh, in the UI, you can also have API calls to automate that process, right? So for provisioning the uh, provisioning of the assets, there would be API calls. Uh, there is API calls to uh, retrieve the commands that you can uh, hand to your uh, administrators that, that's going to gather the data. And then lastly, the uh, commands to uh, upload that data into the Qualys platform. Once the data is uploaded, then it's available to you in the dashboards, in the widgets. It's uh, available for querying as well as your reports. So really quickly, the benefits, uh, what we're trying to do with OCA is to cover all of your blind spots, right? Uh, ability to give you access uh, to the security and compliance data to those inaccessible assets. Provide a flexible way of uh, data collection. So if you encounter administrators or a, s a certain section of your business where you don't have access to some of the assets, uh, now you do with OCA, right? And then uh, completing this uh, compliance and security risk posture. And obviously, uh, you know, expanded uh, platform coverage. You know, in some cases, you may have a, a you know, mainframe sitting out there, you know, which you can't really assess with any other means that are automated. You know, now with OCA, you'd be able to get that data. Uh, from a technology perspective, these are some of the technologies that we're going to initially uh, really support for. And then, uh, you know, this list is going to continue to grow based on, you know, the customer demand. All right, with that, uh, you know, I want to open up for any questions, uh, you know, or comments that you may have. Otherwise, go ahead. No, no. So right now we have solutions uh, uh, that uh, can do vulnerability based on agent or remotely. And then we also have network scanners uh, that are passive that can sit. But this is for assets that you can't get permission to scan them or put an agent on or they reside in an air gap network that you're not allowed to touch. So for those ones, you can give them a, hey, go ahead and run this command. It will gather all the data and they hand it to you and then you upload it to Qualys platform. And now when you run your VM report, it's going to have all the assets that you remotely scan or are collecting data from the agents they will also have this data that are in for inaccessible assets. So that's the idea. Thanks for that question.